Can I start with the you already did. text? Can I start with the text I sent you this morning? Yeah. Like after the intro? <laughs> See, you are you are a little snappy today. <laughs> Try to tell me you're not. You're totally, well, yeah. you're totally snappy. Welcome to the show. I'm totally snappy. That is apparently not totally snappy. Lachlan Cross, the other voice that you hear. What did you want to start with? What did you want I, to say? Okay, well, I got into the um, the beverages last night, and I don't know what was going on, but I, I was night. consuming food. Like, I ate a couple of muffins. I ate, like, an ice cream sandwich. Were you high? I ate a bucket of popcorn. Were you high? No, I, I ran bit. out of beer. So I, I, I got into the rye, and for some reason, I just... Got the juices flowing. Anyway, this, so this morning I got up, and I I had a monster <laughs> up at about 6.30. A big poop. Yeah, you had a big boop, a uh, big booze poop. That's, uh, so that's, I that's thought I would tie poop, into current events, because occasionally I will inform my friends and family of my bowel movements and what they represent for me at that moment. Mm-hmm. So I've sent more than a couple of texts to, to Dean. And this one was, I just had a shit so big, I'm worried the liberals might add a few more percentage points to the carbon tax. I was going to tweet that, but I wasn't sure anybody would appreciate that at, <laughs> on a good Monday. I, Monday. I just think that people don't really, you know, Monday. what is, what is well, this today? It's um, Super Monday, I, I believe okay. they call it. It's the Monday where uh, everybody caught on to the idea that Jesus didn't float back into the clouds and he indeed was dead like everybody else it's so super hold Monday. On. i have a point here i made that up kind of like made, all yes, religions okay. make that up anyway go ahead yeah so your point i get a response from dean dean and listen i understand that i made my first text political yeah but this was unnecessary you made it even more political did it look like the daniel smith 14 cent increase in your tax overnight or the fact that she took away the rebate. And I'm like, why did he need to go there? You did not need to go there. I mean, yes, I did mention the liberals. Yes, I did mention the carbon tax. It's, you know what it is for me? I saw that text. I'm out for a walk today because I like to go for these long megalithic walks in the morning. Yeah. So I'm out for a walk. And I the first text I get from you isn't good morning. How you doing? Excited for the show today. We're going to talk about Easter and everybody losing their minds. My stupid province and how we're we're being taxed on top of taxes, but we're only taking issue with certain taxes that that we don't implement on ourselves. It's like, or ones that we don't get rebates for. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But the first text I got from you was like, I just had a big shit and reminded me of how much I hate Justin Trudeau. And I was like, hmm. I'm out for a walk. Like I'm in the I'm in nature. I'm in nature. My friend Lachlan Cross sends me a text as I'm and I've got my ear airbuds so airpods in so and I'm listening to problem. James Clear's book and I'm like really excited to get through it. It's a big book, yeah, uh, Atomic Habits, and I'm like, this is great. Ding ding ding. Check my phone. I just had a dump that made me realize how much I fucking hate Justin Trudeau. Mm. Ding ding ding. And I'm like, I didn't even Sometimes answer. Sometimes I like to turn my dump. Updates into current events, do. tie them into current events. And then I challenge Carbon those current events because your current events are very different than the rest of the world's current events because you get current events from Alberta okay. media, which is no bueno. And Speaking- what happened overnight last night, let me just let me just introduce this to you and every other beautiful person in Alberta. I love Alberta. I love the people of Alberta. The selective anger out in Alberta is incredible. Is overnight, this carbon tax everybody's angry about went into effect. Three cents on the dollar, on the gas dollar that gets added to your to every liter of gas. It's it's at every dollar you spend on gas, it's three cents, right? Yeah, it's it's hang on just a second. Of the dollar, it's three cents. And then you got another four cent tax added on top of that by Daniel Smith. So you guys are getting hosed in Alberta by both taxes, right? So we both agree all taxes are bad, right? All tax. Doesn't matter what it is. Too many but in Alberta, they're like not saying a word about the 14 cent fucking tax increase that she just delivered to your asshole last night. Well, but you're I only think... mad about the 3%, the 3 no, no. cent tax. No, no, no everyone's finish. No, some of you are not you, some of you, yeah, geniuses are only upset about the 3 cents that you're getting a rebate for 
and somehow I'll tell you nobody's talking about it. I'll tell you what's going on. So that 14 increase, that 14 cent bump is the one that she took away six months ago or eight months ago. And then just delivered it again. And then timed it out to kick back in on April 1st to make the carbon tax increase at this time look even more painful. She's not an idiot. Oh, yeah, she is. Because she expects you see everybody what she's else to doing go. There. She expects so our- everybody else to go like this. Oh, that fucking three cents, which we get like four cents what, back for every year. What Danielle fucking, Smith. And she's like, but hey, guys, don't get upset about the 14 cents. It's the three cents that should really so upset you. Danielle Smith knows something to be true in Alberta and actually most of Canada. If we can find a way to blame Justin Trudeau, we're going to blame him. <laughs> it's kind of brilliant, isn't it? Like, it, you know what I laugh about, too? I laugh about how many people are still tweeting about how angry they are, right? And they actually get a penny more back, so they actually make money on the carbon tax. Oh, by like, the way, I if, don't even want to get in there. Well, Let's on, pivot because I know because I can't. You're, no, I, know, I can't have on, a discussion about rebates. Let don't take it away then. Let me and then no, it I can't. I can do whatever I want. It's my podcast. I'll talk about it. <sighs> So the, what, what, what I laugh about is how mad they get, everybody gets, and everybody is, is defending both taxes. I've defended none of them. But no, if we're no. going to be delivered That's what on makes these me taxes, angry. That's we, what, totally. And you're oh, like, man, this one's like, good. That one's bad. No, all taxes are bad. Dude. No, yeah, that drives me insane, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, listen, the homeless crisis is going up exponentially every year. Yeah. Um, you can say whatever you want about inflation. Big business has a, a stranglehold on this government, local governments, provincial governments. They get a break all the time, um, and and the little guy just keeps taking it. And when you mention you are upset about one tax or the other, somebody automatically puts you in a camp. At yeah. no point have I ever defended anything Danielle Smith has ever done, nor Never did I once. vote for her. But for some reason, when I make an anti-carbon tax, because I just think they should stop taxing us to death, everyone yeah. goes, well, look at what Daniel Smith's doing. Uh, stop. Please stop doing that. that that's, the, that's the issue I have with politics today, is that you get put in these camps regardless of whether or not. Like, I am anti-government, like across mm-hmm. the board. Um, and that's a very serious concern to me because I think we're getting more and more anti-government and i think that Big that's time. a bigger issue in Dude, this country i was thinking about it yesterday because everybody was complaining about the carbon tax pp put out a video of him pumping gas in a in a hat that didn't fit him very well laughed thought that was really funny i'm like get a get your kid's hat dude you need a new hat and i was thinking about it yesterday and i'm like you know they've done a fucking marvelous job of like <laughs> convincing every single one of us all of us to take a side we're all, on we're all taxes explained. yeah and and not just take a side as for or against taxes. i proved it this morning with my shit text but <laughs> taking a side on took a oh side. dude i hate well that's because you didn't include all taxes you only included I, the okay, one but you I were joking have... around and i was joking around because we have that yes. ability I, right yes. yeah, we yeah. have that ability to, to look through see through the horse shit See through the forest of of illegality. See through the forest. Of I should tweet taxes that and go and see what happens. And go, hang on just a second, everybody. You over here and you over here arguing with each other, telling each other you're stupid because this tax is better than that tax, or ignoring these taxes. It is an amazing thing when people look at at all taxes and the same. And they've and you go, okay, they're this. all bad, and then you all get on the same team. It would be an amazing thing for us to be an anti-tax country. Where everybody was like, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to stand up for each other instead of taking the side of two different political institutions who, by the way, hate your fucking guts. They're not uh, they're not they're not out for us. They're for themselves. Yes. Let's do a little experiment. Let me we're recording this now and it'll come out in the next couple of hours. Right. Correct. Yeah. So I'm going to. Should I copy that? that text I sent you about my dump this morning and then just see how political it gets on Twitter. Do you want to do that? Totally. Yeah. 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 Watch how seriously people take it where they're defending their favorite tax. We'll see how much, how many, (laughs) 
Okay, I'm I'm ju I'm not going to put any no, hashtags that's good. in that's it. That's good because because what you're doing is you're floating some kind of evolutionary experiment where you're like, okay, if all taxes are bad, and I'm just going to attach bad to one tax, the federal tax. So we'll yeah. see how all the crazy Trudeau supporters come out and go. You know what you're talking about? It's a great tax. This uh, is a fun save little climate. game. It's our part. It's kind of nice. I don't have a problem with the carbon tax, but taxes are bad. But it is a fun game. To your point, let's have a look and see who's like. You know what my favorite tax is? Okay, we'll see how political it gets in the comments. It might not. It might die, but it might. Right. It might get very political. And tomorrow, yeah, we'll read some of the comments just to sort of see if it works. It's my if favorite we're little, tax. Yes. We'll see if this gets political. Okay. One guy yesterday, so I, I was fucking around on, on, on Twitter, which, by the way, is a scene. Have you been on Twitter recently? Like, for any period of time, it's a scene right now. I keep I telling it. you, it's so much action, Twitter man. is not the it's real insane. world. It's and, not oh, the real I know world, it isn't. though. I know it isn't. When it's I put out a happy, representation. happy Easter tweet this weekend, and the bots from, like, Pussy and Bio came for it, they're like, you think Easter's great? Check a look at, take a look at my bio. I'm like... Uh, this, is a, this is a hellscape, but it is hot. Everybody was losing it this weekend over so a couple of things. Can specifically you explain Easter the, itself. the trans recognition yeah. day? Like what? Yeah. Why? So, I, I'm like I've seen that. <clears throat> I saw mm. that on the news this morning, and I did not see it on Twitter because mm -hmm. I don't engage. Like I don't engage with that kind of stuff on Twitter, yeah. so I didn't see it. I'm guessing there was a lot of virtue. Like there was a lot of oh, it was anger. all weekend. It was all was weekend. It? It was, yeah, you could. But get what away happened? From it. Well, you know how uh, at Christmas time, certain political interests <clears> like to say, hey, there's a war on Christmas. They're going to take away have Merry Christmas and we're going to be doing happy holidays for the rest of our lives. And this is a Christian nation. Same thing applies for Easter. It's fucking the same. But okay. Easter is one of them rotating, uh, you know, calendar holidays, right? Sometimes it's late March. Sometimes it's early April. It's on a Sunday because it is been hijacked by christianity effectively it's a pagan ritual it's been happening for thousands of years so i don't want to get into the history of it it's roman pagan in nature and then the christians came I've along, always wondered like, why it this. moves yeah, why yeah it moves around well it moves around because it's supposed to it's supposed to coincide according to christians who co-opted easter two thousand years ago <laughs> they just took it who uh, said, hey, listen, this is the weekend that Jesus was killed on the cross, and this is the that's on a Friday. It's a good Friday, not for Christ. Just a good Friday for, I guess, the Romans back in the day. And then uh, on Sunday, that's when he came back to life and boom, uh, you know, spent a couple weeks on Earth and then took off in a cloud UFO. That is what Christians believe, right? And it is one of the holiest days. Oh, I know. It's fucked. That's one of the holiest right. days of the year. Cloud UFO. And a couple of years ago, I remember, yeah, seriously, they're like, oh, where do you go? He's going up on a cloud UFO. That's incredible. And uh, that is the story of Jesus, right? And so it all happens on Easter weekend. And so everybody, it's the holiest weekend for a lot of people. So Christmas, he was born. Christmas, he was Easter, born. Easter, he murdered. was killed. Yeah, Easter, but then, he was killed. But then on the Monday, what didn't he come back to life again or something? Nah, not, not to Sunday. He rose from the dead. On Monday, it's kind of when he took off. This is when he was like, I'm going to go on oh, the lamb, okay. walk around, uh, the see, days if I can, see if I can heal these holes in my hands and my feet, uh, go visit some people, and then I'm, I'm going to split and go be with my Heavenly Father. That is the urban legend of the birth, death, resurrection of Jesus, okay. which means that he's up there in human form, taking all the sin and the sacrifice away from people so no one has to see. He's the human sacrifice, right? Back in the day, they would do animal sacrifices so anyway human sacrifice he's now in heaven and he's just soaking up all the sin from the world so christians take that day very seriously well okay that day magically fell on international trans day of global and is this is this a new day no it's been around for 15 years yeah. okay i didn't know that i, mm -hmm. I okay mm -hmm. 15 years. So when you started to see this weekend on Sunday. Why Why is it all of a sudden everyone mad about it this week? Like, well, because dumb people, right? Dumb people believe fake things. Well, dumb people are dumb. So they don't, when, 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 a, when a person says happy International Day of Trans Visibility, on the second holiest day on the Christian calendar, the same people who've been fighting against trans and LGBTQ rights, because in their book, they say being gay is a sin. Okay. Then okay. 
You have angry people saying, I can't believe the trans and the gays took over Easter. How dare you? But they're too stupid to recognize that Easter falls on a series of days at the end of March or the beginning of April. And Trans Visibility Day has been around and in our calendar, along with several other but, days yesterday somebody, for a good somebody, 15 years. I saw somebody say something that it was that they were somehow blaming Joe Biden for this. Yeah, uh, because Joe Biden, as he has for the past 15 years, put out a tweet on Trans Visibility Day, which is the last day of March every year for 15 years. And, and said, sure happy Biden Trans Visibility it. Day. I don't no. think Biden's a big tweeter. No, I don't think he is either. His account put that out. And then the regular <laughs> religious stupids all came out. Right. And it, oh that wasn't the God. only one. It wasn't even the yeah. only one. It was in Marjorie Taylor Greene's like, how dare you take Jesus out of Easter? Because there's this theory among Christians that America and Canada are Christian nations. Let me just show you. Uh, this is uh, this weekend in Canada. This is the reaction to a tweet that Justin Trudeau's Veterans Affairs. Uh, the, it's actually the government of Canada Veterans what Affairs put out a tweet. This is a great example. We want to wish veterans, current members of the Canadian Forces and RCMP and their families. Happy March holiday season. This was on Friday. Right. It's the 31st first today. Yeah, this is on Friday, Saturday. So this was the day before Easter. So it wasn't even Easter. Okay. okay. Now, this gentleman is, and then we will show you several of these, a conservative politician, not a Christian, says he's Sikh, good for him, but he's virtue signaling because he's pissed that Christians didn't get a quick hat tip from the government of Canada on Saturday. Justin didn't send which isn't out a, a fucking I'm holiday. I'm not defending Justin, but did Well, hang on. Not only, not only did he, everybody yeah. did. On Sunday, when it was fucking Easter, this was on Saturday. Why does Trudeau's liberal government keep excluding Christians from celebrating their religious holidays in Canada? Religious freedom is a staple of Western civilization. As a Canadian Sikh, I stand with my fellow Christians, so I will correct you for this. Anyway, he does yeah, that. Yeah, everybody's just so angry. And then Pierre Polyev, he's like, you know, again, and he, he puts everybody on blast because he's a fucking moron, too. He's like, happy Easter. He has risen. It's like a quick little fuck you to like an accepting, inclusive, hey. Happy March holiday, everybody. This was on Saturday during a March holiday. Because, by the way, this weekend, there were several holy days on this calendar. Marilyn Gladue, who is a born-again Christian nationalist, who is an MP here in Toronto, or sorry, in, in Ontario, she is a self-avowed Christian nationalist, like psychotic. She points out with a Toronto Sun article, and they all work in tandem, uh, the Toronto Sun article says Prime Minister acknowledges most religious holidays except Good Friday. Indeed, good he did. Uh, 19 million Christian Canadians need to know that Justin Trudeau and the Liberal NDP coalition do not support Christians in this country. So painting him as an enemy to all people who believe in Christianity. Only conservatives do with our leader, Pierre Polyev. Another dog whistle to the conservative community. Now, here's the catch. I did a little research this weekend. <clears throat> I'm a big researcher reader do you know how many denominations of christianity there are how many different sects I, or groups i'll tell you no this is I good this is good no information idea. to have Forty thousand. there are 40, over 20 40, of those forty thousand of them which by the way christianity started in the year 313 in nicene where they got together and took all the stories put them together over time the bible has been fucked up turned into forty thousand different bibles Stuff's taken out. There is not one Cannondale version of any of Jesus's teachings on this planet. Not one cardinal version. So there's that. Then you got 40,000 different groups going, we're going to come up with our own version of this. We're going to, and we're going to call ourselves Christians. Roman Catholic, Greek Orthodox, that's where it started. Originally called Catholicism. And then is it blew up. Is Scientology a form of Christianity or no? Is what? Is Scientology a form of Christianity? Absolutely. Absolutely. Is it? Really? And okay. all of these forms of Christianity, all 40,000 at one point in time, according to the original purpose of Christianity, which started in 313 AD, they were all considered cults. And they're still, to this day, considered cults be because of what they do and what they teach and how they systemically take money from people and get you to join the group. 
get hmm. you to absolve yourself of any personal responsibility. That is called a cult, my friends. All of them are. So when is it not a cult? When there are enough people. This is literally a, the textbook definition when a cult becomes a religion. There are enough people in your cult that you can file a fucking tax return as a company in a business. Mm. That's when it becomes religion. When you reach critical mass. I, I didn't know So that. we have 40,000 splintered versions of Christians. She says we've got 19,000 of them, but I, 19 million in Canada, but 19 million people that believe one of 40,000 different versions of Christianity that some of which, most of which have nothing to do with what she's tweeting. Nothing. Don't believe in it. A lot of those people don't. A lot of those denominations don't even believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Don't believe any of the kabuki. Some are more extreme than others. Some are less. Yeah. Some are Baptist. Some are Anglican. Some are Alliance. Some are Pentecostal. Some are Ply Plymouth Brethren. Some are Greek Orthodox. Some are Hutterites. I mean, there are 40,000 versions of no this. I have no idea. That's yeah, shocking dude. to me. Yeah. Can I tell and, you a quick here, story? And here's the thing. This is the thing. That's what I tell everybody. God bless Ricky Gervais. This is what I love to tell people. When they're like, you don't believe in Jesus? I'm like, nope. Well, I believe he's a philosopher, but not the son of God. They're like, how can you not believe in God? I'm like, hey, listen. There are 40,000 individual gods, 40,000 individual in Christianity, versions of what you believe, right? You believe one of them. I believe one less because I'm not an idiot. That's the truth. So when everybody's fucking losing their minds this weekend, what they're losing their minds over is the idea that Canada should be or is a Christian nationalist nation. And they're leaving out a whole bunch of information nobody actually has access to. And I just gave you, I just gave you an accurate, very popularized, very short history of what it is that these people believe and how basically they're all cults. So <laughs> suck on that today when you're deciding who you're going to vote for in the next election. Can I, can yes, I tell sir? a quick story? And, yeah, and, sure. and again, um, so for me, um, I like, I don't know a lot about this and, and I've said this countless times on, on this podcast, I have a, a massive disconnect with religion. And it started at a young age because my family was raised by hippies. There's just, there was no religion in my life. So I, I'm fascinated by the whole thing. I really am. And my belief structure around faith is, is this, I, I'm anti-religion because I, I, I'm against religion because it, it pits us against each other. And I, and I, and I, and it shouldn't. And the hypocrisy of that drives me crazy because from conversations I've had with religious people, I always get the sense that they want people to come together. I, I, I think the, the basic teachings of religion come from a good place. So I believe in faith. I believe people need something to believe in. So I have a difficult time about the religious conversation. One, because I have a lack of knowledge about it. And then mm -hmm. two, because I actually, I feel like people need something to believe in. And I'm going to tell you a quick story. This, this surprised me and, and it sort of ties in loosely to what you were saying about 40,000 different versions of Christianity, which again, it's, it's that's shocking to me. It's fucking stunning, isn't it? And the it's majority crazy. of those versions no of Christianity live in North America, most in the United States. Like 25, 30,000 versions of them. And they're all, the, they're all of the evangelical Pentecostal version where it's like... And they all think they're right. <clears throat> not only do they think they're right, that is the juice behind the anti-trans movement in your province, the anti-trans movement in the States. They'll dress it up around like medical shit. But every medical yeah, officer, yeah. every doctor tells them the same okay. thing is that you you don't know what you're talking about, right? So anyway, go ahead. So I got into yoga um, over 10 years ago when I broke my tailbone. I think I started casually doing yoga when I was about 41. And it's something I will actually do until I die. I actually I really enjoy it from, from a variety of reasons, which we can get into at another date, to the point – to a point where I'm actually going to take my yoga teacher training, my YTT, in May for 
a uh, an, an intensive program in Joshua Tree. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this. And Dean and I, have fucking honestly, awesome, dude. Good for you. I'm so excited. I, yeah. And I'm going down there to spend two weeks to do yoga, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to start teaching. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been doing it pretty consistently now for like ten plus years. And um, one of the one of the studios that I was a part of in St. Albert for quite some time. It was actually the first studio I ever went to. And um, I was in there one day and the, 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 the owner and one of the teachers who was really good at it and I enjoyed her classes, she was pretty rattled. And I was like, Hey, what, what's up? You, you seem a little off today. I kind of noticed that she was kind of bothered by something. And she goes, I just had something awful happen to me. And I'm like, what? So she was in a, like a strip mall in St. Albert with a bunch of different businesses. And you know, when a new business would, and she'd been there for a while. And when a new business came in or somebody took up a space, she would go down and offer them some kind of a discount to come and take yoga classes or whatever, right? Like, so she would go down and give them a pamphlet and go, Hey, listen, we have regular lo lo uh, yoga here. And, and this is, you know, this is what we do. And if anybody in your business wants to come and experience this drop by, here's a discount. Welcome to the neighborhood. And there was a church that took up a space in one of the buildings. And I don't know what religion I never really bothered to, to pay any attention, but it, it was one of those, after she told me this, I paid more attention to them and they were like, they were a big singing one. And like, they would have like bands and stuff like that on Sunday. Oh yeah. Like Baptist, Pentecostal, evangelical, something, same thing. Some, yeah, 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 yeah. Something yeah. pretty like, like they were very into it. Yeah. But the guy that was running it, that opened it up, turned to her and said, I need you to leave because I feel like what you're doing is a cult and it's damaging the fabric of society that we live in. And I'm going to need you to go away. Yoga, yoga, stretching. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> and, if, and I laughed like you did. She was really upset. And the reason I laughed is because she, just picture a woman, <laughs> picture somebody that does yoga and teaches yoga. What a and, bunch of pussies. eh? Like, just, just like that's what they're afraid of. They're afraid of like they've been told. And that's the thing. They've been told that like, you know, the, the study of self mindfulness, satanic. Mm -hmm. They've been told that it yoga, satanic, anything that isn't what they are is satanic, including Catholicism. That's my issue, that's my issue with religion, though. Yeah. Dean. That they tell right? you that like, everybody else is wrong and they're right. But here's the thing, dude. It's, it's wrong. such a it's wrong to do that. life experience being a born again Christian. I've lived it. I've been through it. It is such a muted, shitty, persecuted, awful life experience. You walk around thinking like you know everything and you don't know anything. Your version of fucking world history is just hilarious. It's like, oh, the Earth's only been around for 7,000 years. It's great. And you're like, fuck, uh, no. It's not at all. That their religion is the only religion when there are 40,000 other versions of that religion that are much nicer. Some are way more fun. And, and here's the catch. Any religion that tells you to throw away your life experience for one that that's way better when you die, but during that life experience that they want you to have a shitty life experience, you got to give them a bunch of money and you got to go do their bidding. That's a cult. All of it. No yeah. matter what it is. And you know what? I had someone send me a tweet the other day. They were like, call, call, call a mosque, a church or, or, or Islam, a cult. No fucking problem. Same thing. They all are. They're all man-made mm. and they're all cults. And they've just got so many people believing the horse shit that it's like, if you don't, and it's all attached to the afterlife that it makes me laugh. And here's the thing. The reason why these things exist and are considered religions and are considered more important, like to, to, to life than anybody else's life. Yeah. Is because if these people didn't believe it, they'd kill themselves generally speaking because they have no uh, reason to live other than no i'm telling little, you the truth no, no I'm that's a little severe i know it's severe but it's like everybody every single one of those people okay. lacks any I purpose and I, so they accept some kind of purpose um, from something I, else I, I, like i no, guess this is i it. can't accept that. i know I you can't, can't but i can 
And that's the beauty okay. of these conversations. Yeah. No, uh, but I, I have a theory. Can I, can I inject yeah. with yeah, my please. theory? You, okay. So yeah. I think people are ingrained to want to be a part of something. Okay. And um, then they, they create these communities, wh whatever it is like you can have, I'm going out on Friday night to monster pro wrestling. That's it. That's a community. People feel a part of, of, of that. And they go every, every month and they have a great time and they meet people with a common interest and I'm going for different reasons, but I'm going to be going with a bunch of people. Okay. That's a community. And I think people need that in their lives. Right. Yeah. And I think that's the essence of, of, of religion. And I think it's, I think it comes from a good place on top of the faith thing. So if the faith thing is important to you and you have whatever relationship with God or Jesus or whatever it is, and you right. need that in your life, then that's, that's fantastic. I think where yeah. we're running into some issues right now is that it's clearly the world is becoming more of a secular place. It's Easter Monday and you and I have just spent 30 plus minutes talking very aggressively about religion and we're going to post this on the crier media network <laughs> uh, right so and, and and i can't wait by the way okay so so okay i think what's happening is those groups mm -hmm. i had no idea there was 40,000 of them are being felt are feeling like they're being their way of life and their beliefs are being questioned and they're being forced into a corner so now they're pushing back and I think where we're running into issues is I also think they're worried about their lack of control over the world and they're getting into politics more aggressively. So dude, they've always gotten into politics. That's always, but I think they're being, the way, church... they're being oh, yeah. way more aggressive. A hundred percent. You'll never explain the Trump thing to me, but that's another <laughs> yeah, that's, conversation. That's what it is. It's uh, it's the kettling of, of of like, and and here's the thing: you want to radicalize a group? If you need a quick army of brown shirts to like believe your horse shit to go and take action for you in politics, who are you going after first? You're going after the people who will believe anything, <laughs> like anything. Uh, Any, not, hang on, hang on. Yeah, yeah. I, Without I any yeah. proof, you know what the word faith means in the dictionary and we'll just we'll pivot to some other stuff here do you know what the word faith means in the dictionary to believe in be google it to believe in something due to religious apprehension and worry as opposed to any facts or proof that is the dictionary version of faith. i never looked it up but that doesn't sound healthy <laughs> it sounds like you're coming from a place of weakness <laughs> once again and dude can and I, listen you can you guys everybody you, you say an expert you need ten thousand hours from the age of like seven till i was 18 i spent in the evangelical church i don't dean i never question your knowledge of it or and i don't no, you question shouldn't. no and i don't but i do i do worry about your level of anger towards religion oh, zero it, anger Zero anger. Okay, I'm just that, informing people. Let well, me give you one more example before I get to your theory on secularism. I and mean, you're right. The world should be a secular place. The world should be run by people with no. No, 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 no. I don't think that. I don't think that's fair to say. I think 100%. the world. Okay, I think the world should be allowed to do what the world wants to do, and individually, you should be able to have whatever beliefs you want to have. Totally. You want to believe in God, Jesus. You want to believe in Muhammad. Buddha, totally. I don't care 100%. what it is. Yoga, I don't know if there's if that's. Yeah, there is. You want to believe in that? Then you believe in that, and you shouldn't worry about what the guy that lives across the street from you does, or how he shows whatever he needs to do to 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 express his faith. That's that's my thought on it. Everyone yeah. should be allowed to believe whatever. There's forty thousand of them, and you choose 100%. one. Percent. Hundred percent. Go not. Hundred percent. Totally. But because I don't. That doesn't make me less of a person than the. Uh, and that's the issue that that, we, well, that we're running. According into. to them, it does. If that's you do not believe the exact same thing they believe, not only are you a sinner, but you are unworthy. Unworthy of living 
in their sphere to the point where they do not want to do have anything to do with you. And in the, in the evangelical faith, there's this ideology that comes with your faith. It's to not be something called unequally yoked. That's the term, which means Christians are forbidden, evangelical Christians, from hanging around or being friends with people who don't believe what they believe, doing mm-hmm. business with people That's who don't wrong. believe what they believe, I or marrying I don't believe, I don't believe in that. anybody who, of course you don't believe it because you're a fucking normal human being who doesn't yeah. believe in magic. So of course you don't. You're fucking a sane individual who believes in friendship and human beings. They do not. Unequally yoked. Look it up. Like I'm fucking lying because I'm not. And it's no, fucking I know, hilarious. No, I know you're not. I know you're not lying. I just, yeah. So the exclusionary nature of it makes me laugh. And you look at what's going on with Maple Maga That's in this country. And you in and I will agree States. on that. That oh, totally. exclusionary thing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, but you see, in some cases, certain presidents really feeding it to that crowd. Did you see the Trump Bible shelling bit this week? I can't. I can't because I can't. It doesn't make any sense to me. It, it makes perfect How is sense. that your guy? How is that your guy? Can I play? I can't. <coughs> How is that? Dude, can I play this? And 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 by the way, this is just a fundraiser. It's a, like a spike into the religious community saying you got to have this Bible. Pierre Polyev's doing the same thing with fundraisers this weekend. I got fire hosed by a political fundraisers. About Why Jesus are you Christ. still on the list? You keep, keep taking yourself to... off. <laughs> They're doing it on purpose. To I know. Every time I like, I unsubscribe to the Pierre Polyev fundraiser <laughs> list. I get resubscribed immediately. It's like, fuck. Okay. Someone hates me over there. <laughs> I got to give them points for that. <laughs> I do too. I just like it doesn't even affect me. It doesn't bother me. But the, this weekend was like uh, they want to remove religion from all of your lives, and as Christians and as a party of Christians, we which nobody's doing. Like that's the thing. It was like well, nobody it's happening was, naturally for a well, and it reasons, should, no. but nobody's doing. Like fuck, I'm I could care less if someone said Happy Easter to me or Happy Kwanzaa. It doesn't matter to me. It's just like, hey, you enjoying your time off this weekend? Good for you. Go eat whatever it is you're allowed to eat today and have a nice day with your family. Awesome, good stuff. Yeah, but they use religion as that spike to get into your wallet, right? And Pierre Polyev does it with like a legitimate Easter email saying he's risen and I need your money. This weekend, Trump was doing it with Trump Bibles among other things. <laughs> Did you see this Bible? Uh, he he's, I saw he's, the Bible. I didn't see he's selling. Is he selling yeah. other stuff too? No, like, it's like you got to. He put a flag on the Holy Bible. It's called called God Bless the USA Bible. Him and Lee Greenwood, the singer who invented that song, God Bless the USA. Remember that one? Um, little deal because he's trying to raise money for uh for, for all his lost dollars. How many people buy those? What do you think? Sixty bucks. Um. I don't know how many he sold millions. Did he put anything in there? Like, did he? Yeah, there's like, like a there, the Constitution. Is- there's a picture of him with a sword in there, or something like no. that, riding a horse. Yeah, something no, like that. Oh, there is. You're making. <laughs> there's him on a red, white, and blue unicorn with his dick in his hand, going "fuck the world." Like, I, I don't know what's, I don't know what's in it. But like a whole bunch of shit. And apparently the reviews are terrible. Everybody's like, "You're missing like huge you- parts of this." <laughs> You can't do that. Can you do that? <laughs> no, but anyway, you my point is he did. He totally did. Trump 60 bucks. You Everybody's can't buying do it. fucking Bible. Even I know that's wrong, <laughs> and I'm not anyway, even religious. Here is um, a gentleman put together like a, a quick supercut of all the religious grifts that Donald Trump has done. And by the way, the Pierre Polyev stuff, like he has risen. That's just a way into religious wallets too, right? And religious people love to give money to things that they think that Jesus wants them to give money to. It's the fucking best. Well, like again, those, those televangelists, you know those televangelists on TV? They make millions. I, they make tens of millions, and hundreds of Joel Olsteen, On the backs of people that can't afford Kenneth it. Kenneth Copeland. I don't begrudge those guys. Like you might hate them. I'm like, hey, fuck, if you're dumb I think enough. It's criminal. I think if it's you're criminal. dumb enough to like send your, the, the, your rent money to some guy who need, needs a fucking new personal Gulf Stream five, yeah. more power to him. I mean, you're I, uh, good mm. for you. I hope you get fleeced. The I same think thing a lot of people that get shit. fleeced, though, are the ones that can't afford it and maybe aren't, you know, don't have the cognitive abilities to separate. Yeah, it's just easier to separate grandma from her money when she's you slipping a little bit, right? Like, well, it's not just grandma from her money. You, someone with a, a cognitive ability under the age of 90, 90, 90 IQ points. 
They'll give you fucking anything. Um, that's who they target. And they believe in weird fucking religious magic. Anyway, here's the Donald Trump grift supercut religious people. Enjoy. I'm proud to be partnering with my very good friend, Lee Greenwood, in connection with promoting the God bless the USA Bible. <laughs> so if anyone's keeping count, right, that is steaks. You can enjoy the world's greatest steaks in your own home. Mattresses. Mattress collection by Serta. Board games. A new game is Trump, the game. Ties, skills, trading cards. And a bowl satin tie with the double Windsor nut. Cards are back with a bang. That's the real deal. And now, Bibles. I think you all should get a copy of God Bless the USA Bible now. And Yes, the man found libel of sexual assault currently on trial for paying hush money to a porn star that he allegedly had an affair with while his wife was at home with their child is wanting to tell you about the word of God. Wondering what one or two of your most favored Bible uh, verses are well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me that's very personal, but I don't want to get into specifics. An Old Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably oh. equal. <laughs> He's never read a <laughs> Never once. <laughs> that's funny. It's a great vehicle. <clears throat> Religion is a fucking unbelievable vehicle. For politics and grifters, dude, it's fucking awesome. It's, so it's hard to watch. People. Yeah, I think it's awesome, dude. I, I really yeah. do. Like, there are a lot of people out there that are angry at the religious institutions and political institutions, but I'm like, hey, if you're dumb enough, more power to you. Can I? You. Can I Please. read? This might be the funniest tweet of the year. All right, and listen, I I want to say before I read this, I want to say this out loud. I knew nothing about Puff Daddy and I, you know what, listen, there's a lot of weird stuff coming out and maybe this is bad timing and we shouldn't be making fun of this kind of stuff, yeah. but I cried. I was laughing so hard. My sides hurt. How many dudes did Diddy diddle if Diddy diddled dudes? And the top comment is a dillion. Now that should not have made me laugh as hard as it did, but because it's awful, this is an awful story. A dillion. A dillion. Some guy named Thomas just chuck that in there. You know, oh. I I often thought we were past cracking jokes about religion and sexual assault. Somehow we figured it out. Oh my really God, Dean! Us. Come on, I know, like I know, I know. No, it's I'd awful. Seriously, the story no, is not, awful, it's but so funny. A whoever dillion? came up with that? <laughs> How many dudes did Diddy diddle? If Diddy diddled dudes, <laughs> D Diddy doesn't look worried, does he? You see him like lounging what, around. Uh, why isn't he in jail? I thought, no, oh, dude. Like I it's... said the other day, I'm like pretty sure he's a Fed. Yeah. Like if that's me. And and the feds were fucking absolutely go after my three houses. So here's here's what I'm starting to think. But they're I'll arresting people around him too. Oh yeah. But here's what I'm saying. Like, this is one of the like the running conspiracy narratives around Diddy, around the Diddy yeah. stuff. Is that he is a Fed and the feds broke into his place to take all the incriminating shit out of his place. And they have no plans on charging him. Wasn't there a conversation about him trying to get out of the country, though? That that, that never happened. Oh, yeah, no. I guess while well, he did, he went to Florida. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> he went to Florida, Bama for the weekend. Not part of the United <laughs> States. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that's whoever whoever made that tweet. Mm. That was bad. That was wrong. A dillion. No, it wasn't. How many dudes did Diddy diddle? If Diddy diddled dudes, a dillion. Yeah. A Should jillion. we just get into the locker room retro replay of the day brought to you by Arden Roof Systems? I would love to. Arden Roof Systems hosting a golf tournament. We'll get to those details and how you can get involved as well. But yeah, the LRR, please. What do we have today, my friend? Well, Every once in a while, and this happened quite a bit on the um, 
And you know what? We need to start talking more about my expertise as far as relationships go. Just based on my success with my beautiful wife, mm -hmm. um, I think I have a lot to offer. And this is this is no exception. This is basically me giving advice to anybody that is in a relationship and, and how you can make it stronger. The Lock, the lock Retro, 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 retro play. Play. A couple of days ago, we Completed actually a did a project. Yes, we did a caulking project together. Pardon? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, here's the thing that I need you to know if you're listening and you're in a, in a fairly new relationship. If you can caulk a, a, a kitchen together. Is, well, now that the daughters are gone, right? Well. You can do that sort of thing in the kitchen. Absolutely. <laughs> caulk away. If you can do a caulking project together with your significant other. You might be okay. <laughs> what were you this talking? This is a new, the backsplash for the... Uh, okay. Yes. She put up a new black backsplash? And, and you Fairly were... Fairly emasculating, and you were, <laughs> yes. And you were she able did. to reach, and you did the caulking in the areas that you could reach, and she did well, everything else. <laughs> she started to do the caulking, and then the gun was a little, it's a little tricky. Uh, it's and a two-hander. It's a two-handed two -handed <laughs> caulking job. It's a, yes. It's a bigger caulking gun. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we started, she started to do it, and I was hiding in the basement, <laughs> and then I realized she was struggling with it, and she was sort of quitting halfway through, and then I came up, and I said, listen, I'll help. You finished her off. I got, I got stronger caulking hands, <laughs> based on some... <laughs> Based on caulking experience. <laughs> Why is this conversation funnier for me than normal? Because <laughs> you're drunk. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Anyway. He was drunk. I just wanted to point that out. If you can do a caulking job with your wife. Couples that caulk together stay together? Yeah. <laughs> Things will be okay, everybody. <laughs> You know what's amazing about that clip, <clears throat> by the way, Lachlan? That's the Locker Room Retro Replay of the Day, brought to you by Arden Roof Systems. If you're in Edmonton, need a new need eavesdrop, you want a quote on a new roof, and you want it all guaranteed, the number one Owen, Owens Corning Platinum Partner in North in America. Yeah, no, dude, North America. Guy's the yeah. biggest. Guy's the best. Yeah. He's the best. Stacy Distatel, um, who's come over as part of the Locker Room Package. If you would like uh, any information on what he does for a living, he is one of the nicest, most down-to-earth, honest individuals you will ever ever meet get a quote go, go to ardentroofsystems.com in um, edmonton edmonton area he's not doing your house in, in ontario and, no, the, and the golf tournament is friday july 5th for a very worthy cause the stollery child life program sign up a couple of uh, people let me know last week that they've signed up so there you go. i will be there hosting the event it's gonna be a good day um but what i found amazing about that clip is you have that same gear that i do when it comes to projects in the house where your significant other He's like, I want to do this. And you're like, do we have to? And she's like, I'm going to do it. You know That's what? So embarrassing. And out of spite, totally. That's where I'm going with this. Out of spite, you're like, you know what? I work hard. I'm not putting up a backsplash on my Saturday. Well, and then your poor wife is like does it. struggling, trying to figure it out. You're downstairs no, crushing no, My wife pints. is actually really good at these things. I know. Well, I like avoid it because, because I'm embarrassed. Get, Exactly. I'm hiding in the basement drinking. But you're able to tamp that embarrassment down somehow to the point where you're like, I'll let her take it for a spin. I'm the same guy. I'm yeah. the same dude. You and I, I remember once my ex-girlfriend came home. She goes, I'm coming home. I got a big surprise for you. And I'm like, what is this? Maybe a new Teddy? Maybe, maybe, maybe some something assless? Great. A she pulls loaf? up. With like a 20 foot tree hanging out of the back of the truck. And I'm like, oh no. She wanted a it's... tree in the front yard. And we had to plant it and dig it. And it was 32 degrees. And I was hung over from the night before. And it was a Saturday. And I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it today. I don't feel like it. You ambush me with this tree. Yeah. Forget it. And she's like, I'm going to do it myself. And I know why she said it, because she knew that I physically couldn't watch her do that whole thing on her own, because I would feel like the world's biggest piece of shit boyfriend. See, now uh, that's where we do have to separate. Our paths might separate because I would have sat on the porch and watched her. If 
If we're putting a tree in, I want to know we're putting a tree in. Don't surprise me. Where you are on your own. Yeah. You get so Barry. Just, get Barry from across the street to help you dig a hole. She, dude, two shovelfuls and she starts crying performatively in the front yard. And I'm like, fuck. You're weaker. You're a weaker <laughs> man than me. I went out, sweated out for a solid four hours, making sure this tree got in the ground. Each shovelful angrier than the next. Fucking shovel cut. Throwing the fucking dirt onto the road. I'm like, burr, burr. Halfway through that, she's like, Well, if you're going to make it an angry experience, then don't bother. And I'm like, Oh my God. No. Yeah. <laughs> I have, I I have a very healthy that. relationship with my wife. She, I know. she does try to involve me in things. Um, yeah. But when there is something, and my wife is actually really handy. So when she does jump into a project, she might need me to dig the hole, but she'll ask me to dig the hole um, in advance. In yeah, advance, that's good. and um, she will. She wants to do these things. Actually, you know what's kind of cool is we talked about it uh, again last last week. She may be volunteering with Habitat for Humanity. I met a guy that works with that organization here locally, and because she's she loves that kind of stuff. She watches the the home channel and like whatever that where they fix stuff and she's got a crush on one of the bald guys. I don't know what his name is. Bonington. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's yeah. good. You should let her go there and then she'll go to Habitat for Humanity and come back with a new boyfriend. That's awesome. <sighs> what are you doing? Listen, she's not Oh, she's you not, don't know that. She you is not that. straying. You don't Look know at, that. <laughs> You're not the only middle-aged snack on this podcast. <laughs> uh, at Lachlan Cross is where you can find him on Twitter. Uh, a couple more things before you, because I, yeah, I feel please. like you're trying to get rid of me here. I am. Um, yeah. We have AJ and Sarah on the podcast tomorrow. Speaking of the Arden Roof Systems Golf Tournament on July 5th, they're mm -hmm. the title sponsor. We'll learn more about their company, Pioneer Golf Company. Yep. And this is a national thing, so we're putting him onto the podcast. And Dean's very excited because he's a he is a scratch golfer. And don't tease me. I need you to start confirming plans one way or the other if you're coming out for that. For the Are Art and Golf out? Tournament? Stollery Children's Life Program? Life Program, yes. Yeah, I'm 100% coming out July 5th. Um, don't just say that. I need you to confirm because... I'm I'm coming. I'm okay, because I have to auction off an opportunity to to golf, golf with, with us. Yes. Golf with us or me? Like, are we splitting us up? Because I no. just want to golf with you, and I don't care who else is there. But like, no, no, not, you I'm and not, I, and, and then a two, we you we get know. a twosome. You this, no, you listen to me, and you listen to me good. You go to these celebrity golf tournaments, you get auctioned off to go and golf with somebody, or they're like, hey, this guy's want to golf with you, and you got to fucking spend six hours with some of the biggest doofuses on the planet. I, don't I always enjoy do them. I always enjoy them. You're See, now no, you're trying uh, to back out too. already. I do too. No, I'm not. I'm coming, but I'm saying I am riding in a golf cart with you for 18 holes. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. You and I. Yes. Are, but we're auctioning off a chance to golf with yeah. two other people. Absolutely. Let's and anybody sure that's going to throw that. money at us will be worth golfing with. We're okay? a lot of fun. I don't cheat. Lachlan doesn't cheat. He'll be snapped by the fourth hole. I might bring some treats as well. You don't know. I, We're gonna I, have some spirited conversations. Yes, I'm coming to the fun. middle a little bit about vaccines. Okay, so yeah, uh, everybody I, can just have not a great time. Everybody in Alberta is an anti-vaxer. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do is show up in a fucking full hazmat suit. Okay, <laughs> just get off the plane. Yeah, it's gonna be tough to swing swing a, a wood in this, but I'll make it work. Tournament in a hazmat suit, like okay. I'm from the video game Fallout. Anyway, anyway, um, so there's that. You can sign up by going to ardenroofsystems.com. Okay, the the registration page is right on the main page of the of the of the um of, of the what you call it of the of the homepage of the web page. Now, I am I don't have any more room. Please stop sending me notes on the Monster Pro Wrestling locker room VIP guest list. Um, I was only supposed to put 10 names down and I've had multiple people. I got to figure a new strategy out here for this thing because just you know, mentioning it on you the podcast so many people got me the, in trouble. I know you had so many people sign up for free tickets that you're going to have to go in there and say, we got like a hundred unpaid people here tonight. Well, uh, massive. No, it's not that bad, but massive said 
g- give away 10 spots. And then we had him on the podcast and we mentioned it a couple of times. And now I'm being inundated with people that want to go on Friday. Just it's donations. April 5th yeah. at the, at the Alberta Avenue community center. The more the merrier. Um, I'm going to be on hand and um, that's all I have for now. All right. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Uh, don't forget Arden Roof Systems Golf Tournament. Uh, go to ArdenRoofSystems.com for more information. We did As good always, work today. Lachlan. Yeah, we did. We crushed it today. Great job. It was a lot of fun. Happy Easter, everyone. Can I say yeah, that? Yeah, happy Easter okay. or whatever. You, yeah, you can say whatever you want. Uh, okay. I'm of the opinion that you should be allowed to say happy Easter or happy Kwanzaa or happy holidays or whatever. Uh, happy color red or happy satanic uh, satanic balls in your mouth day. Don't care. Uh, whatever Is that a like. day? Yeah, I think so. Awesome. Talk to you soon. See you tomorrow. All right. Lachlan Cross. Uh, in the locker room, make sure you subscribe to the locker room YouTube page. They got an email list there as well. You can sign up for that. Uh, the locker room coming to a digital platform near you. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being part of the show. Really appreciate it. Don't forget, you can get everything you can do at crier.co. You can also find us on YouTube. Dean Blundell Show, Crier Media on YouTube. Both go subscribe. You can check out... Uh, the podcast that Kinsella and Adler do, Warren Kinsella, Charles Adler, I, these guys are unreal. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to go and download their podcast, uh, the Charles Adler podcast, please do so. Uh, he and Warren are on a heater. Uh, no one does a better job of popularizing content and not just serving up softballs. There are no softballs. They try and figure it out for everybody, not just the left or the right. Uh, so make sure you go and download the Charles Adler podcast with Warren can sell anywhere you get a chance to do so. Uh, thanks to our friends and partners at Rome Auto. Go to Rome.auto today. Don't buy a car. Subscribe to one. Super, super simple. You know why? There's one payment. It includes your insurance, routine maintenance, roadside assistance, everything with the exception of fuel, flexible monthly pa- plans for you. you need a car for a month. You're transitioning between cars. You don't know if you want to buy an EV. Try one. They've got tons. You can browse cars there and you can get that card delivered to your home. You just need a credit card and all you need to do is use the promo code Rome with Dean. Rome with Dean. When you go and sign up for your brand new Rome.auto car subscription account, You can drive one for as long as you like. You can switch your cars up. There is only one payment, and it is affordable. The economy of car buying sucks. Use the new. These guys have figured it out only in the greater Toronto area. Go to Rome.auto today. Rome with Dean is your promo code. $150 off your first month, by the way. You're welcome. Go to Rome.auto today. Also brought to you by our friends at Fact Check. Uh, The biggest and best advantage you have to getting agency back into your information lives. Disinformation, misinformation, or a problem. Major problem. Uh, We see it all the time. We saw it all weekend long over Easter. Easter. We're a bunch of Christians. Donald Trump says, your poly is a carbon tax says, dude, just just have, have tech figure it out for you. Stop arguing with people. And help us build this out. The beta test program is available now for anybody that's interested in becoming a verified fact checker. Go to factcheck.io for more information today. F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K dot I-O. Sign up for their beta test. Support the program. They're building a disinformation killer that not only encompasses the epistemology of every tweet involved in every narrative, but it has every Facebook post and real live connections that give you ability not only to have a little buddy companion that tells you whether or not what you've read is true, but it also helps you correct the record. Uh, You need agency in your life when it comes to information. You need to know where sources come from. You need to know who did it. You need to know why. And then you need to know the truth. Perfectly sourced information for you. Go to factcheck.io. Sign up for their beta test today. F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K dot I-O. Also brought to you by our friends at Muse on the Mic podcast. Go to Muse Massage Spa for more details. Sign up for their podcast there or their Patreon account where it's totally uncensored. Emily and Riley do an amazing job of coming alongside the good people in the sex work industry. And there are a lot of them. It is legal. It is work, and they are advocates and educators. Their podcast is tremendous. It's on YouTube. It's on Patreon. Again, Muse on the Mic YouTube, Muse on the Mic Patreon. Download and subscribe there. You can also check them out at MuseMassageSpa.com, and they've got a deal, 50 bucks. It's the Dean deal. 50 bucks off. Go in. A little discreet experience. These are great people. It is therapeutic, and it's safe. They're the number one body house in the entire country. So make sure you go and pay them a visit today. Download their podcast and listen to these lovely ladies, Emily and Riley, on their podcast, Muse on the Mic, Muse Massage Spa, for more details. And, of course, brought to you by Cantorque, rugged, hardworking torque wrenches that put the ability for you 
to be able to do anything that has a bolting or fastening solution that you can't find one for in your hands for heavy industry around the world. They've been doing it for a long time, 20 years of experience and knowledge at the table. They provide you with comprehensive solutions tailored to your specific requirements as Canada's leading industrial tool experts. They give you the very best in sales service. Rentals, calibration, maintenance, and custom fabrication of industrial torque tools, tension tools, flange management systems, and impact sockets. You can rely on the highest quality products in the world right here in Canada. They ship and use around the world as well. doesn't matter. It's in China. It could be in Dubai. It could be here in Toronto. Uh, they build tunnels. They do all kinds of stuff in machinery, heavy machinery, heavy forestry industry. They do all kinds of stuff in the nuclear industry. Uh, these guys are experts when it comes to torque wrenches, industrial torque wrenches, and they are the best in the world. So go and visit them today on their new website, all their product services, news, and their podcast at cantorque.com. Again, cantorque.com, makers of rugged, hardworking torque wrenches, Canada's leading industrial tool experts, proudly manufactured here for heavy industry around the world. Have a great day, everybody. Appreciate you being here for the show. Happy Easter. If you celebrate, and if you don't, whatever. Happy whatever it is you're celebrating. Have a great day. Happy fucking you don't have to go to work day. How about that? That's universal. You can all enjoy that one. Right? Right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Again, really appreciate it. Don't forget, be nice today if you can afford it. Unless someone's a dick to you, then feed it right back to them. Have a good one. Bye.